and it's during this time that I usually take questions that you've sent in to me and answer them here on our television program or on the internet. Well, on April 20th, we had the pleasure of having Bishop Tom Bridenthal, Diocesan Bishop of the Diocese of Southern Ohio, the diocese that St. James is in, come and visit us and spend some time talking with me at, here in this chair and answer a few of the questions that you all sent in. It was a great time, and we appreciate him being here, and I'm glad to have somebody else here answering your questions. Don't forget that you can send those questions to Ask Father Rob, care of St. James Episcopal Church, 200 West High Street, Piqua, Ohio, 45356. Let's get to our questions. This person asks, which is the greater sin, the evil act or the desire to do the evil act? Interesting question. I, I was, um, for 10 years, I was a professor of Christian ethics in an Episcopal seminary. And uh, so this is right up my alley. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, a very important question. Um, Christian ethics does take very seriously the intention of the heart. And therefore, um, within our tradition, it is not unusual to find reflection on sinful thoughts. And a lot of, a lot of um, spiritual practice is really about in a sense, learning how to, to control and to cleanse our thoughts so that, they're, so that even if we are behaving properly on the outside, there's some consonance between right behavior on the outside and right thinking on the inside. Having said that, um, it, it, is, it is the, um, I would say, the consensus uh, through the generation, through centuries of Christian ethical thinkers that um, thinking about an act uh, that's bad is not as bad as doing the act. <laughs> if you have a choice, uh, if, you're, if, if, you're, if you have it in your mind that you'd like to kill somebody, that's not a good thing, but it's better to have it in your mind than to do it. So, uh, Particularly for the person you're thinking about. Precisely, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, thing that, the metaphor that I always like to use is, I mean, every person has moments in which they are uh, tempted, that the thought goes through their mind. And it's, it's almost like a person coming by and knocking on your front door, you know, peeking in the window, wanting to be let in. And these knocks occur all the time. So when you invite that person in, right. and say, come on in, take off your coat, stay a while, and you let that thought, whether or not it's a thought of violence or a thought of infidelity or, or a thought of idolatry or, or a covetous thought, and you dwell on it and it lives mm -hmm. in you and it takes root in you. And even if you don't act upon it, if it is taking up space <laughs> you know, in your heart, you're in a bad place. You, 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 are, you are suffering spiritual damage, <laughs> in this case, by having this unwanted guest in your life. There's, there's a wonderful <laughs> story in the Jewish tradition um, about Cain and Abel, you know, the first, so, so the, the first brothers, and Cain eventually kills his brother Abel, so he's the first murderer. And in, the rabbis are thinking about this story, and there's a little line in, in Genesis that says, the God, God speaks to Cain, and it says, what are you doing? Be careful, because sin is crouching at your door. And uh, the rabbis say, what does that mean that sin is crouching at your door? Well, they say, well, sin is like a, like a, little, um, like a little puppy dog or a kitten <laughs> that's at the door. And if, if, you, if you feed the, the kitten, it'll begin to grow, and then you, you might let the, the kitten in, into the house, mm -hmm. and pretty soon it turns into a cat, and then it turns into, pretty soon it's bigger than you are, and it's in charge, and, you, and, and you're, you're looking, right, yeah. Right. And they say, that's what, that is what sin is like. It starts out, outside, just outside your door. Now here's one I think of the classic questions, one that I certainly have run into many times from parishioners from when I go to other places and, and field questions like this. I think it's one that uh, Christians have wrestled with for centuries. Uh, what is your view on God's place in disasters and other mm. calamities as test of faith, punishment, or something natural that God has little input with? It's a very, very hard question. Um, I will tell you my own uh, personal belief, and that is that uh, God is in charge of everything, so we can't say that God has nothing to do with disasters. We can't have it both ways. But God created a physical universe and made the decision to raise life up inside in it, and we believe that that life finds its culmination in human nature. 
We are creatures of